Hi everyone, welcome back on my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Margot and today I'm going to talk about solo travel. So, as you may know, I've just came back from this big 8-month, 7-month solo trip in Asia and I've talked about it on Instagram, I've talked about it on YouTube. I wanted to make you like a, a review of my trip and today especially I'm going to talk about how amazing it was to travel solo and how enriching it was and uh, all the things I've learned uh, through this solo experience. Just for the record, it was the first time I was really leaving my home country for more than like a month maybe. Like it, apart from a holiday, I've never been out of my country really. And also it was the first time I ever did a solo trip. It was like this big, big shock at first, but turns out it was really challenging, but also really, really enriching. And I cannot say how grateful I am for this experience. If you're wondering if you should try to solo travel, especially as a woman, I would say go for it. And I know it sounds weird because most people would say if you're a woman, solo travel is dangerous and it's risky and it's like more challenging. I've never experienced solo traveling as a man, obviously, but I would say it's less scary than it sounds and it's also so good for your self-confidence. I'm going to talk about it some more during this video, but I just want to say that if you're wondering if you should go and you want to try to solo travel once in your life at least, I'd say go for it. And I'm going to talk about everything I've learned through solo traveling and why I think everyone should do a solo trip at least one, once in their life. So let's dive into it. I find like five main points, main reason why you should solo travel in my opinion, or at least the things that really the biggest lesson from this solo trip for me at least, but I think a lot of people can relate to what I said. So just so you know before I'm starting, for you to understand, I did a backpacking trip and I did nine countries. I was moving from places to places every four to five days um, and also I was traveling in hostels, especially I think if you're traveling in Airbnb for example or um, hotels or you're volunteering or stuff, I don't know, maybe it's a different experience and maybe you will not relate to what I'm saying, but I think it applies to most solo travelers. So when I left, I really wanted to see the world, to explore, to meet new people, to discover new cultures, and I did, but I think what I, what I got the most from it was more like the inner discovery and self-discovery. I think when you experience like freedom, like pure freedom almost, because basically I was doing whatever I wanted, except like I had a budget, <laughs> of course, but like I was making my own days, I was going to the place I wanted to go to, I was buying the food I wanted to eat at any point, like it was so much freedom that I think it made me discover myself at a much more deeper level than I could ever do in France or in a daily life, like on, on a daily basis with all the, the rules and all the like your routine and stuff who kind of framed your life and you cannot really discover what you like deeply. I mean, yes, you can, you can always, but I think it's a really, it's way quicker to do it by traveling solo because I had to make so many decisions a day and I, I remember I talked about it with a lot of people who, who were also solo traveling uh, with me in hostel and stuff. People that don't understand how exhausting it was to solo travel just because of the decision making. I was making, I don't know, like 30 decisions a day. It was insane. Like, where I'm going today, um, what I'm gonna eat, and should I, I don't know, should I book this hostel or this one, or should I take this flight, or is it like too expensive to go to this place and to see this museum, or should I better go to the beach, or it's like, it feels like not hard decision to make, but actually on a daily basis for like eight months, it's so exhausting. But also that's how you can discover yourself really. Cause what do I like? What do I want to do really? Do I really like to go to museum actually? Or it's just people telling me that it's nice to learn about new cultures. Do I really want to do that? Or do I want to take, to go to a massage? Or I don't know. It's like no one is here to tell you what you should do or what you shouldn't do. You are really the only person you have to please for seven months. Which is which was insane for me. I'm saying seven months. I'm not saying you should go on a seven month trip, solo trip, but it applies to any solo trip you want to you want to do. It's like even if it's two days, you have two days where you are free to decide whatever you want to do. So second point, and I think it's like the most obvious one, kind of, is that you should solo travel because it helps you overcoming your fears. Um, and build your self-confidence. And that is the biggest 
thing about solo traveling is that you are independent. You are your own parent <laughs> during this trip. Um, you are making all the decisions and also you are on your own, which means that you are responsible for yourself and if something came up, you have to deal with it by yourself. And that's scary, but also when you overcome this fear and when you s resolve the problem, if there is one, you will be so proud of yourself and it will give you so much self-confidence. I know now that if tomorrow I have to leave to the other part of the world by myself, for some reason, without anyone, without family, without friends, I would be okay. Like, I will adapt, I will make, make new friends, I will find a job, I will... I know I'm capable of doing that. And that is so, like, such a good feeling to be able to, to count on yourself, basically. I'm not saying that I couldn't do that before, I just didn't prove it to myself. And I think some people need that a lot, like, to prove themselves that they're capable of being alone and that they're gonna be fine and that they can do it, they can deal with stuff by themselves. And that's the key from this experience, I guess, for me, was that I learned that I was enough by myself. And I'm gonna talk about a, a bit more about solo traveling as a woman, because before I left, people were scaring me with that a lot. Um, what are you gonna do? You're gonna live by yourself in Asia. Uh, you're a girl alone, you're young, you don't have any experience with solo traveling and what if something ha is happening to you there, no one's gonna be able to help you, you don't speak the language, you don't know like, it's like the countries are not the same as yours, the system is different, how are you gonna defend yourself, stuff, everything. People were like scaring me so much with that. I remember I watched videos about like girls solo traveling, giving tips about what they used to do um, to prevent themselves from being like arrest or having troubles uh, with uh, locals or people abroad like I remember some girls saying like some women saying yeah I'm single but I have like a ring on my finger so people can can see it and think oh she has a husband so she's married so maybe the husband is around I'm not gonna try anything and I was so shocked at this when I watched this video I was like okay a ring and I've decided not to do it, even though I know a lot of people are doing it, but a lot of girls, sorry, but I I don't I don't want to do that because I don't want to lie. Like it's it's like I don't you don't need to pretend you have a husband to be safe. That's what I was about to say. It's just I've been traveling alone, as I said, for seven months. I've been to nine countries in Asia. I've been to a lot of places alone. Um, and first of all, I think Asia is a is a place where it's pretty safe compared to Europe, for example, for women. I think it's basically the same as if you were in your own country. Like, I would not do certain stuff as a woman in my country and I would not do the same in Asia or in any other country in the world. It's like, I will not go back to my hostel at 2 a.m. In, in, the, in the morning by myself. I would never do that in my country. I would never do that abroad. It's just it's making sense. The only thing I was usually doing was when I was in taxi, for example, or if a stranger were coming to me and asking me questions, um, if they were saying like, oh, you're traveling alone? I was usually saying, oh, no, I'm actually meeting some friends at the place where I was. Like, I was saying, yeah, I'm meeting with friends. I was trying to say in a way that people were waiting for me at this point, for at this point time. So basically people were like, okay, so someone is waiting for her, like, she's not alone, alone. But I was never saying like, yeah, I have my husband just there or something like that. Also, most people were just asking it out of curiosity because a lot of taxi drivers were like, oh, but you were like really young and you're really far from your country and you're alone. So they were like genuinely curious, but also like kind of worried for me because it's a thing to be worried about women being alone, but I had more problems in my city, in France, on a daily basis than I had in seven months of traveling alone in Asia. Just so you know, like, fear is giving you, like, it's all about imagination. It's like your brain is creating stuff, scenario, like, dangerous scenarios in your mind where you were like, oh my god, but if this happened and this happened and if I'm gonna, like, miss my plane and if I have 
like I'm getting robbed and if I lose my phone or my credit card and stuff and I'm not saying that it's not happening I know a lot of people that lost their phone or like miss a plane or stuff but if it happens it's actually okay you will find solution it's not the end of the world and if you limit yourself because of those fears you will never do anything and I remember I was so scared and so over prepared for this trip I mean I mean it's not a bad thing but I was it was out of anxiety that when I arrived in Indonesia I remember like thinking oh my god so much anxiety for nothing it's actually so fine and I'm really happy to say that nothing happened to me during this whole trip like nothing I just got scammed once which was nothing <laughs> really nothing compared to this whole experience I've never got robbed never missed a plane never got sick never got like never lost anything out of my luggage or, any, or anything like everything was fine so it can also happen I'm not saying that nothing happens to no one but I'm saying that don't like don't let the fears control you and limit you third one third one is actually my favorite social skills and getting rid of like shyness kind of um, I mean it's really personal for this one but if you're an introverted person um, or if you have social anxiety I think solo traveling is the best thing you could do and that's weird you're gonna say because you're solo traveling so you're not gonna be social but actually if you want to meet people don't travel with someone I'd say I'm not saying again that if you're traveling with a friend or with your partner you will not meet people it depends on your on your mindset I've met so many people traveling together um, but I think that's if you tend to keep your own circle and be really like shy and you're not really a social person I think solo traveling it's such a good way to break that and again I had this big fear for such a long time that I was not able to make friends that I was an introverted person that I couldn't go out there and talk to someone or that it was really hard to build connection with people and this trip changed completely my point of view about that because I've met thousands of people and I've made friends in like few hours in such random situations that it made me realize that actually building friendships and meeting people is one of the easiest thing you can do. So basically when you're traveling solo, you kind of have to meet people. Like it's, it's like a survival instinct. Like you need to rely a little bit on others out of safety as well you need to be able to like talk with someone at least to tell someone where you're going and what you're doing today um, and also just because I, I, w I was not able to survive like seven months without talking to anyone so I decided to go to hostels also for that because it is a place to meet people to meet other solo travelers and also to just have like a social life um, and also it's cheap <laughs> and it's really nice and I was amazed by how easy it was to make connection, as I said. Um, I would arrive to a place and usually within the few hours I was at the hostel, I would meet people and plan something for the night, for the, the next day or... Um, sometimes it was also a bit more challenging, it happens... It happened a few times where um, no one was really chatting in my dorm or, I don't know, the, the hostel was quiet and I couldn't really talk to anyone naturally so I had to go out there and talk to people which is also really challenging so when I was I remember when I was trying to explain that to my friends in France they were like wow like I could never do that it's just like going to a room taking a random table with people and saying like hi um can I sit with you can I talk with you a little bit and like get to know each other and stuff um, for an introverted and shy person as I was, it took me so much social energy, like like my social battery after that was so low because it was a, such a big effort for me to just go out there and talk to someone. But also, if you are staying in hostels, chances are that you are open to a conversation, so it was easy to talk to people. But also, because I was solo traveling, sometimes in the streets or when I was visiting a place or even like in transport, people were coming at me and talking to me because when you're alone and if you are open to it people will come to you and talk and so now I have the guts to basically go out there and talk to people if I need to I'm no longer shy or afraid to talk to anyone 
or to talk on the phone in a different language or to talk to strangers, which was not that obvious before for me. Um, so if you want to try to be more social, solo traveling. Solo traveling, guys. That's the best thing. This one is a little bit tricky, but I'm, I'm going to try to explain it as, m as clear as possible. So it's about being your own home and also like kind of to detach from everything. So it, it is actually not only about solo traveling, it's also about, about backpacking. And because during this trip, I was able to detach from almost everything. And it's because I was alone, but also because I was far from everything I knew and everything that was familiar. And also because I had absolutely no routine or anything that was really any structure around me. I had no job, I had no like time I had to wake up um, in the morning. I had this, as I said, complete freedom. Like the only place that was familiar was myself. I was the only home I had. And I like to say like that I was kind of a snail, kind of, because literally I had this big backpack, backpack um, I was carrying around and it was my home. Like my house was basically me and this backpack. I had nothing else and yeah, it was like 20 kilos of stuff, like basically t-shirts and toothbrush and, and me and that's it. And it gives you so much perspective on life and on how nothing matters except you. I'm not saying that fuck you, no one matters except myself, like in a selfish way. I'm saying that really, when you go back to basics, it's you. It's you and yourself and that's it. It's like I had this whole, like this big um, reflection about what is home, like what's my home, what is the, the sense of belonging to a place, um, why do I feel comfortable in one place and not in the other. I think my mindset about it changed so much during the trip because at first I was like, no, but it's, I can find a home wherever I want to go. But actually now my mindset is more that it's not the place. Home is not a place, it's a feeling. And the feeling comes with you. And detaching yourself from everything that you know and having absolutely no home, no place to base yourself, like to live, makes you realize that this feeling of home, this sense of belonging comes from are you feeling comfortable with yourself and are you safe? in your inner world. I realized that during this trip, the places where I felt the best, like the, the, the moment where I felt really at home, was not because of how comfortable the place was or how good the people were. It also helped, but I'd say it was because I felt the most aligned with myself at this moment and I felt free and authentic and confident. And now that I know that, I come back home, in my home city, with a way different perspective on the place I'm living in. Because if I don't feel at home here or anywhere around the world, it's not because the place is not nice. It's because I don't feel like myself in this place, which is different. And the number five is kind of, it's, it's a conclusion kind of number four, is that you should solo travel because you will start to appreciate things more. And again, it applies to solo travel, it applies also to travel or backpacking, I think, in general. But I'd say solo travel because it's like the extreme um, <laughs> travel experience, I'd, I'd say. But I think you will appreciate little things way more. And I think I have a way clearer like, image of my country and my life. I think I can see now where there's things to improve where and also but mostly about what is amazing and how grateful I am for some stuff I I have but I never like I neglected kind of the simple fact <laughs> that I have a room a personal room and a personal bathroom it's something I appreciate so much <laughs> that's because of dorms but it's like a silly thing, kind of, but I, I can say that for so many other things. I appreciate the, having, like, nice roads. Being able to find water 
I can drink out of the sink without getting sick. I appreciate having my friends around and being able to call them and see them right away. So many little things like that that you appreciate way more. I remember like the, f the main thing that, um, that was surprising for me when I came back was how beautiful the streets were in France. I think it applies to Europe maybe in general, but I remember walking in the streets in Paris and then in Marseille when I came back and I was like, wow, the buildings are so beautiful. Like the architecture is amazing. Um, I've never noticed that before. It's just because struggling is it's opening your mind so much about like you comparing and you you're seeing so many people and so many cultures and so many landscapes that you can appreciate like see the beauty in everything and also compare the systems and the cultures. I'm not saying that there's cultures that are better than others, um, not at all. But I'm saying that you have good and bad in every country I guess and I can see the good and the bad better now um, some some places that I fantasized now I have a way more concrete image of it a more balanced image of it and and I used to have this really bad image of my country of France to the point where I was thinking I could never ever leave my life here I'm not saying I will I'm just saying that now I recognize and I'm grateful for everything I have because I've met so many people telling me you are living in France that's one of the most beautiful country in the world and you're complaining and you're you want to move abroad but do you realize how grateful you are to live in this country where everyone is dreaming to live in Paris or in or in the south of France not everyone but a lot of people I'd say um, so it makes you realize so many things about your life and I think even if it's just for a week or a weekend that you try to solo travel, I think it's a different experience than going in, in a hotel with your friends. If you try to backpack or go in hostels, that's, um, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's a way for you to really open up to something else. I think when you're traveling with other people, you tend to, tend to experience uh, backpacking in a different way. Not saying that it's good or bad, I think that it's really an inner journey that you're doing when you're solo traveling, which is not, I think, when you're traveling with someone else. So I hope it was not too long of a video. I will try to do it, like, do a shorter video for next time. Um, if you have any question, feel free to put that in comments or DM me on Instagram. And thank you so much for watching this video. As always, you can like, share and subscribe. And I'm so happy about being back on YouTube again and I have so many ideas of video about personal growth and other stuff. If you have any suggestion, please put it in the comment, but I have also a lot of ideas, so I will see you really soon, hopefully. Bye.